Starkey, you are my sole remaining connection to the mortal realm. You also represent my last hope to break through this prison of time and space that I have been confined within. At present, the history here is unable to be altered. I must return to the beginning of consciousness and fall to dormant for a period of time. Before I do so, I ask that you act in my place within th this period. Only you can break through the barriers of this time and space and create an opportunity for us. Mother, my aunts and uncles are still sleeping. I couldn't wake them up, so I snuck out into the garden and picked some flowers for you. Do you think they'll be upset with me? The woman's face showed sadness, but help a look of acceptance as she took in the child's words. Oh, no more audio? Okay, okay, whatever. She sat up and slowly began to speak to the ch child before her. No, my child, you've done nothing wrong. Everyone's just tired. They need a good rest. It would be best if you didn't disturb them. You have been such good care taking me. Wait. You have been such good care taking care of me when I'm feeling a bit better. Let's move to the town together. You'll be able to make a lot of friends and have a little more freedom. Are you sure? Grandpa told me that I needed to stay in the castle. Don't worry, my dear. Grandpa will surely agree. Anon. Could you pass along a message to Grandpa? I'm feeling much better now. Please tell Grandpa not to worry. Uh, make sure to avoid the Chamber of Secrets or Dad will be angry. You promised your mother that she could count on you. Now it's time to leave so that she can continue to rest. I wish that AI voice did it more often, but it only does the first line of text for when a character first speaks. It sucks. Why did my luck go up? You close the bedroom door quietly behind you as you leave the room. Cool. Maybe I should have checked that room first. You know, doesn't matter. We find Grandpa. Burn Excuse me? Burn the carpet. Great. Great. I love that I know that's a- What? How? What? No. Wait. Huh? For some unknown reason, you suddenly feel creepy. As if there are many invisible dangers lurking around you. However, this feeling disappears soon. A heavy sound rings from behind you. Like a door being pushed open with great force. You take a look back, and a man covered in badges pushes it away. The family portrait slowly steps out of the into the stone corridor. No. No. It's going straight to my mom. Why is the ears so... Oh, they're so loose. Auto saving. <laughs> we have to go back. There ain't no way we don't go back. Finally, we can be together forever. Uh, what? An unusual aura of black mist swirls and swiftly dissipates into nothingness. Uh... Your parents simply disappear in what was less than smoke and dust. You swear you heard a string break inside you. I got a 13 there, I think. Unless the dice are separate, instead... No, I got four. But I wouldn't know. Where's Grandpa at? I just realized that. Hopefully Grandpa's okay. Grandpa, you over here? The moment you walk in into the study, the flow of time around you completely freezes. As you notice something changing in the air, you struggle to stand and lose consciousness. When you regain consciousness, your grandfather is there, standing in front of you. You also almost immediately notice a gate that you have never seen in the study before. My dear grandchild, you are the family's last hope. While the stars of the world all abide by rules and patterns, the destinies of people themselves are different. We've made you bear far too long much responsibility. So now, child, I'll give you ten years of freedom. My grandfather pointed to the stone gate standing in the center of the study. The gates seem to connect two worlds together. Um. You see the meadow and forest spread far on the other side of the gate. You notice that Grandfather's tone seems different today. He's acting far softer than normal, creating a sense of discomfort within you. You subconsciously voice that sense of doubt climbing up from your chest. Grandfather, are we going together? No, me boy. Grandpa, I don't want to leave. I want to stay with you. I don't want to leave here. I don't like the outside world. I want to be with mom and dad. Well, you just saw them absolutely disappear. So, they no longer exist. I don't want to leave you. My dear grandchild, I couldn't give you a good childhood. 
It's all grandpa's fault. Why you gotta blame yourself, bro? Grandpa couldn't save your parents. All your grandpa can do is offer you 10 years of freedom to live life as you wish. Anon, my pride and joy. Even if you feel sad, please, face life with optimism. I know you'll continue to suffer as the haze builds up in your heart, so please try to forget what comes before. Forget the stone walls you've lived in in your home here. Forget the faces of all of us, your family. Forget the memories that bind you to this place. Forget everything that happened here. Child, remember the sky is always connected. No matter where you are, the stars will light your way home. In your eyes, the gate now turns into a soft and comfortable bed. A wave of exhaustion washes over you. Now all you want is to rest. A comfort the bed ahead of you can provide. It's not a bed though. He just did a spell on you, bro. Ten years later. Providence Night Dormitory. Public security is only getting worse. There's already another incident. I should follow the doctor's advice then get to bed earlier today. I really hope this medicine actually works. Patient seems to have experienced severe memory loss without any lasting damage in any other physical or mental functions themselves. Based on patient explanation, he is able to slowly piece together the missing memories, but small amounts at a time, though with tremendous pain. Unfortunately, by the time he is able to even get anywhere near the deeper portions of his memories, the pain becomes too much and he's unable to continue. The problem lies with what comes next. If he doesn't attempt to look through these memories for an extended period of time, then it fades as if he'd not remembered it in the first place. This means that he finds himself at the start of the gate he'd been venturing if he doesn't keep at it. You take the medicine bottle from the cabinet. Medication prescribed by your doctor to act as a stress reducing agent, which he hopes could be a counter effect from the effects of sleep traumas and hallucinations. Take the medicine. I don't get a choice here, so you might as well just take it. I hope that I can actually have a good dream for once. <laughs> what the hell? I got a 95, and yet it's a failure. The system's not making sense to me. I I'm kind of figuring this 95 has to be below 70. Sure. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on here. Despite the medication. Your restless anticipation of a potential good rest is preventing you from being able to I am MID 8 live fall asleep as the sound of your heartbeat rings out. Many strange images flow through your mind and you begin to be unable to tell whether you are half asleep or awake. Oh no, it's that damn creature. I can't control my body. I'm supposed to be in a dream, aren't I? No matter how it seems. It's still just a dream. Well, I seceded. I don't know what the seceding means. I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing yet. You wake up from a nightmare, forcefully pushing yourself against the back of your bed in a cold sweat. Whatever attacked you left no wounds. It was just your imagination. Even so, your body acts as though the pain was real, sending waves of anguish through you. As you try to calm down, you breathe deeply a few times and slowly begin to feel yourself accepting that it was just a dream. You hesitate for a moment until you fall back asleep exhausted. As you slowly enter the realm of sleep once again, this time you are uni interrupted by the many nightmares that usually haunt your restless self. Ooh, later. There is no written message on the envelope. What? But the seal itself feels strangely familiar. You open the envelope subconsciously. And on my amazing grandson, today is your 18th birthday. I prepared a birthday present for you that is waiting in my study. I hope you don't mind the brevality, but I am sure you'll find it easily. You are our family's last hope, and I truly believe that you will be able to overcome this disaster with love from your grandfather, George Howard. Why did the letter disappear? Because it was magic. Your mind is flooded with fragmented images. Like it's all a dream you've yet to awaken from. The very memories that you've been unable to grasp are now themselves reaching out to you. 
you are unable to fully process it all at once. But it sits there like smoke waiting. You imagine will be a matter of time now before the missing portions fit back together. Okay. Understandable. Maybe I should take everything here. Yeah, I'll take everything. I'll take my umbrella too. Or a novel. I'll take them all. Alright. This was the, the book that Amy recommended. I haven't finished reading it. I still need to also return this thesis as well to the library afterwards. Okay, cool. I'm um, looking for inventory. I assume I can have infinite inventory, right? I'm gonna equip that. It might as well. Might as well equip to my main hand. What is that? Splint? Oh, it's medicine. Ah, uh, just over 80. Finally, thank you. So it is taking down my luck for my rerolls. Okay, so I need five luck to reroll. Note paper in the book. And uh, they've been putting on the play in Tosha in the school. I mean, I've never watched an opera before. So any chance you come watch with me? Amy, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We have a day. Um, we need to go to the library. A P. It costs to go to a place? What? Why? Amy. Yes, Amy. There apparently an opera performance happening soon. I'll be thrilled to go with you, but I need to uh, leave school for a while. So, would you want to go with me when I return? That sounds great. It's okay if you don't, if you don't aren't back in time. Wait, what? It's okay if you don't aren't back in time, though. We'll have plenty of opportunities in the future. Anon, please take care of yourself. I will. I'll be back as soon as I finish my work. Art. 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 Trait gain. Puppy love. How nice. How nice. We got puppy love. Can I return the book? I kind of went here to return the book, not yet ask you out. To be completely honest. Miss Julie is a professor of history and linguistics at the university. That's cool. She's been rather tough on you because she believes you are talented and would like you to inherit her work. Recently, that relation has been a little strained. You clearly got to your recent class on time. However, no one has any memory of you being there. Do you have time to wander around? Get back to class. Miss Julie. I'm going to be out of school for a while. Young people are always wasting your time. Nothing but nonsense is what it is. Drinking, partying, gambling, traveling, and so on. All students these days seek is to have fun first and foremost. I actually succeeded. Let's go. Julie was not really angry with you. Her expression showed a look more akin to frustration and disappointment. I finished my homework yesterday, actually. I promise I'll try to catch up on the lessons I missed when I get back. You must remember. As a researcher, you must not fail into the habit of slacking off. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt this time. Here's a summary of the lectures for the next few weeks. Thank you. Let's go. What was this? Take what? What did I take? What did I? What? I just took something off the desk. I don't even know what I took. What did I take? What did I steal? I don't think I stole anything. Oh, wait. No, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. What is it? Observe. Oh, so we have like little charms that we can put on that increase our stats. That's great. That's cool. A man was reading a book intently. Eye of newt and toe of frog. Hair of bat and teeth of dog. For a charm and powerful trouble. Like a hell broth boil and bubble. Go out. Go back here. Um, school gate Carl's room. I have no idea. Idea why I would go to Carl's room. I don't even know who he is yet. Did it. You promised last time that we'd pull our money to buy a decent baseball bat. I already bought it. But it's time to pay for your share. I'll hold on to it and you can use it whenever you want. I, I don't have much on me right now. What? At most, I can give you $5. This is a $100 baseball bet. You need to pay your share. You should be paying for your 50%. This bet is not worth $100. You don't. Believe me. Either way, 
I only have twenty dollars on me. Well, I can take a loss this time. After all, we are brothers. The blonde man took the money and left happily. Can I talk to this man? See what happened? Heartbroken. No. I wouldn't. Bring have brought the money if I didn't want to buy it back. Where can I find twenty dollars now? What are my options? Today is the last day I had planned for work too. Lend him the money. I don't care. I found twenty dollars back there. It's fine. Wait, really? Thank you very much. I will pay you back as soon as possible. I have the money. Don't. Don't. He I don't care. Out of the school as fast as he could. My luck went up. I did that all to have my luck go up. What's in the trash can? Look through the trash. Observe. Use perception like my ear. That's great. Use perception, please. Thank you. No point one zero Barn Street. My thing went up. I what? don't think there's a Barn Street in town. Oh. Interesting. Matches? Fund. I'll take it all. Run through the trash. I don't care. Okay. I guess I'll go to Carl's room. As soon as you enter the room, you see Carl drinking his way to enlightenment as usual. Aw oh, man. You hear him happily humbling in a tune of his own creation while writing what you believe to be his manuscript. Can I look around? Can I rob this man blind as he's drunk? What lies before you is a desk that carries piles upon piles of notes, academic theses, books, and small notes that look to have been written and swiftly forgotten about. Sir, what is this picture? It came in the mail from a previous patient I worked with. You want to thank me for curing his strange disease? He's rather young, but he was complaining that his memory is getting worse rapidly. He told me that it was all tied to some strange dream that he forgot the contents upon waking up each day. All he remembered was that there was some place he wanted to go. So I aided him into achieving a trance like say to search for memories in his dreams subconsciously. Sometime later, I got this painting in the mail. I suspect he found what he was looking for. Look at how he's smiling in front of that yellow house. Wait, what? You notice a broken yellow badge attached to the edge of the letter. Upon picking it up, you feel a strange shiver run through your body. You examine the badge a little closer and see a strange symbol along the back of it. But something to the two, it indicates what it might represent. There's something that makes you uncomfortable about this symbol. I looked into this just in case. Sir, this badge seems interesting in some way. I can't discern. Do you mind if I studied it? Feel free to take it. The clutter is piled up in my office anyway. I don't have the time to look through every last thing here. Professor Carl, why are you drinking again? I don't plan to drink once the day comes to an end. I'm not an alcoholic for crying out loud. Anon, do you understand the idea of wearing another persona? I don't quite understand what you are getting at, Professor. Alright, so as an example, a drunkard is one of my personas. When I'm a drunk, I can relax my mind and release my emotions to a much greater degree than normal. On that note, I still have more wine on hand. Would you like to try it for yourself? You should experience a variety of emotions, rather than sticking to your norm of comfortable. In a sense, emotions are a greater form of empathy. Empathy. Incomprehensible knowledge. It's just good for you to experience the world in various ways. That is as far, bro. I already know that, Professor. I've already been trying something similar, in my case, trying to understand emotions through literature. Do you enjoy it? Or at least do you feel like it's been beneficial to you? I hate it. No, specifically. I hate stories. People tell stories, put themselves in a position of authority. They use these stories to elaborate the, their own values that they believe to be correct. Santa Claus keeps a list of bad children. 
Only hardworking bees are allowed to be given money. Women were made from one of Adam's ribs. These well-known stories are laced with personal values and truths. The wider the story is told, the more it constrains people to act as a form of truth. These stories fight for power, with the winner being a form of fact or cultural standard. I just think it's an excuse for power. So who are more interested in the world's actual history? History is written by the winners. Even so, their still truth can be interpreted and observed. What's up with the S's being so far from each other? No one can return to the past themselves after all. All we have is the interpretation of others. The current way of humanity, after all, is to understand the past as a grand narrative, after all. Well, regardless, I don't suppose you came here today to discuss your studies. Professor, I've come to say that I'm leaving for some time. I'm going back to Arkham. That's great to hear. He's the Even Batman. If you hadn't decided to do so, I'd have done my best to persuade you eventually. People's past experience will affect aspects of the present in some manner. We've been unable to get any results with form of trans therapy. I've attempted after all. I'm certain that it's those lost memories that are the cause of your current problems. Even so, don't put too much expectation into this. Even if nothing comes of it, you can still see it as a relaxing holiday trip. People still need a driving sense of purpose. Yes, I understand, Professor. I hope that by the time you return, I have a better understanding myself of your condition. Here are the keys to the car. I won't be traveling anytime soon anyways. Hmm. If you feel like you owe me, you can just wash it for me on the way back. Oh, oh, the car, the car. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking I was to wash your back or something. I, that, that was weird. My mind went totally off base there. It has been with me for many years and just like me is an old soul. Thank you for everything, Professor. Let's go to the library. Actually, let's go to school gate. Remember, you still owe me $30. The blonde man dropped the puppet and left angrily. Well, he's got his doll, I guess. You all right, my friend? Help him fix the doll. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, sure. Yes. Don't have used any success for it. Thank you for fixing it. The doll was the last gift I received from my mother before she passed. My father thought it was too torn up, so he secretly threw it away. I later saw it at an antique store by chance. Fortunately for me, the owner kept his promise and held it until I had the funds. A puppet, his mother left him. Possible. Paper. I didn't actually expect you to contact me. Do you have the money you owe me? Uh, what what the? the? Why do you hit me? I have my own hobby now. As my bro, you have my back, right? Yes. Of course. I've gotten into painting. This is my first work. But $100 seems appropriate. But when you agree. What the hell? Why is it so expensive? You could easily sell such an incredible work for thousands of dollars. $100 is nothing compared to that. That's not too much to ask, isn't it? No. It's not too much. As expected of my incredible brother. You'll be rich through my paintings. How about you purchase once my art once a week? No need to worry though. I'll make sure not to overwork myself. I need to get to work on my next masterpiece. Remember though, don't let father know about my hobby. As ran away with a look of terror in his eyes. What the hell did this guy do? He just bullied someone. President Stone passed away at I don't need to know that. I owe you a debt of gratitude for what you've done for me. Don't look so worried. The doll told me that she could grant my wishes. All she wanted in return was to devour the weakness inside of me. This is what the first time I felt so free. I'll leave this with you so that I can forget my shameful past. He throws the doll to you and walks away laughing. Leave the school. Oh, wait. Huh? Where am I? Farmy Street? Let's go to the ones that are free. Decided to head to the interstate bridge. Is that... I don't understand. 
Oh, am I leaving? Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize I was leaving. I thought I was going to the bridge itself. It, it, okay, fine, whatever. It's not a long drive from Promise to Arca, Machu, to Machu, she, damn, not gonna get that. You can easily ha make a trip within a day, but it's mostly mountain roads. As you drive on, the breeze blows on your face, making you feel relaxed and excited for what we awaits ahead. You think to yourself, maybe it will be good to travel once in a while. As you continue your days, journey, you pass by many quaint little villages and clusters of wild animals running through free. The car eventually begins to pass by droves of cornfields and orchards. Now you are greeted by the multicolored leaves decorating the trees with bright red and gold colorations. As evening approaches, you follow the camp marker, mar map markers to a mountain path. At this hour, the sky has gotten dark. Unfortunately for you, it also begins to pour heavily. You're almost near your destination, but even as nightfall draws near, the town of Dunwich is still nowhere to be found. Wait, what? You continue to drive around the and follow a map to find the whole town. Even as night falls, there's still no sign of Dunwich. All that you can see around are wild mountains. Just when you're about to give up, your eyes catches a covered bridge halfway up the hill. You continue to drive by the stone columns in front of the bridge, prevent the car from fitting through. Hmm. Great. I guess we'll walk there on are it. Signs of passage. While some flooring looks newer, it generally seems solid with no signs of wood aging. As you cross the covered bridge, you notice a white mist enveloping the surrounding area. You turn around, you quickly realize that every direction other than your current path is impossible to make out. You can only continue forward. You continue to venture into the mist. You quickly lose track of time before the all-encompassing fog finally lifts, only to be replaced by the darkness of night. By the time the light returns, you find yourself in the corridor of a ruined castle. Sweet. Where the hell am I? Oh, this is old home. This is home. This is mother's room. You enter the bedroom. Most of the room has been wrecked by rubble quite some time ago. The many piles of rubber and layers of cobwebs make it look like a graveyard. Ah, oh, yay! Daddy check. Oh, it's like my mind gonna turn. Oh, reserve. Yippee! While most of what you can see is dust, cobwebs, and of course rubble, you can. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. You eventually find a photo. You can tell from the photo that it shows a family group of about a dozen people. One of them is gray and old man standing in the middle. Next to him is a young couple holding a child with long light blue hair. The woman complexion is pale as she seems tired. The man behind her is wearing a black broaded brimmed hat. You cannot see his face. The child in the middle turns out to be a girl you never seen before. When you tried to take the photo with you, it turned into dust and ash. Vanishing. Wow. Okay. Can I go over here? Jump. Use item. You build a simple oh. wooden bridge out of planks. Great. There seems to be a secret passageway behind it, but the intersection is blocked by collapsed rubble. There is a weird statue. Investigate. Let's you go. Look closely at this sculpture. Realizing that its limbs actually hold a similar structure to the human body. As you look at it intently, it seems to come alive. You reflexively feel a dizziness, like something has been drawn away. Attributes SP has gone down. What happened? What? Uh. 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 <laughs> How do I fight? What techniques do I have? I don't got no damn spells. There's spells in this game? There's spells? Should I even speed? I spit you until the end of the turn and succeed in the strength contest. Drain 3-6 from the target. Metamorphosis, what should not exist in reality with vitality beyond the limits of humanity. Immune to poison. Well, I don't even think I could do any of that. Unarmed attack, used weapon. Double-edged. Minus speed until the end of the turn, deal 212 damage with extra damage, then grant self a random negative status. Why would I do that? I think I'll just start off with a normal attack. I, 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 
still don't understand what I'm doing. Technique. Look for enemy weaknesses. When does it apply two stacks of exposed weakness on the hunt? Okay, cool. Damn! Why did I take that? Aw, oh, man! 36% to a hit. Damn. Damn. Gotta keep hitting. Gotta keep trying. I just realized I'm hitting this guy with an umbrella. I might die here. Can I apply burn? You know, let's do that. Let's, let's apply burn. I think I'll do a medical check. See if I can do it. Well, either I die or I eat some medicine, right? Well, that's not gonna help me. Maybe I should have just fled. Who did 12 damage? Think that's actually gonna work? Damn, 1 HP. Ooh! No, no. I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna die here, and it's not my fault, okay? I didn't expect myself to be in this. I know I can flee, but I ain't. That's right, I had fire! Wait! No! That's, that's wild, bro. I was extremely lucky there. Because the fire did 1 damage before, which I didn't notice. And then I did 12 damage to him, which did 13 damage to him. And I only needed 1 damage. And the fire was still on him. I thought it was going to disappear. Uh, two books are intact. Oh, what? What two books? The ones up there? You sent something quickly falling from above. Well. Uh-huh. Can I... Can I not get such high rolls? Can I? I'm gonna take the fail. You realize that it was an explosion only of light and sound, along the lines of a flashbang. So was there a flashbang? Okay, I just used luck for no reason. Read the left notebook. The right one looks like it has a little bit of darkness coming off it, so I'm gonna read the left one. Ronald failed. I was forced to restrain him. Yeah, nah -ha. What does the symbol mean? He carved on his body just before he lost his sanity. This must be an important clue. Ron, your efforts will not be in vain. This does not appear to be the language of any living or past civilizations. Someone like Rana would have had much more information if he was still sane. I need to complete researching. I think I found it. This word means mentality. No, it means my spirit. That isn't it. What exactly is it? Many chaotic porn and twisted symbols appear later. It can be discerned that the owner of this diary wasn't in particularly good mental state. Unexpectedly, the rune must translate to mean them. It's them. I should have thought of this. I was thinking of them. I've been targeted by them. I must forgot I must forget all of this right now, immediately. No. I have to record it immediately. There was a long torn line left behind as if the pin tip was pressed hard against the paper. Then it was as if the pin was twisted off, leaving only the mark of a word. What? What's this? Why is there a key inside of me? What happened? The crevice of history. Everything okay? You've come to a rather strange place. Space. You look to the left and see the stars on the universe are shining brightly. This is your past. It's at this moment you start to feel that the joys and sorrows of these past 10 years were all in vain. When you look to the right, the stars are dim. Here you are see order and chaos altering and you are shown bizarre images that are incomprehensible in such a short period of time. You see a light shining 10,000 times brighter than the sun. You begin to hear laughter all around you as if someone were admiring a work of art. You see many aberrant, aberrant monsters spreading across the universe, each acting in a way you can only describe as full of distortion and madness. Their very genes out of the genetic blueprint drawing a sea of flesh and blood in their wake. You see the stars burning all around you know it's the whole universe burning. The burning stops, leaving only darkness forever. Decision. 
On the left is the past, where the stars and the viewers shine brightly. On the right is the future. The darkness is endless. You never go to the past, okay? Because the past no longer exists. The past was once was. You must go to the future. To what is going to be. How are you? Uh, Lord Godman. Hello, I've searched the universe in pursuit of the remaining power I seek. I didn't expect that I'd discover you within a parallel universe. It's quite interesting, you concealment is both effective and cowardly at all. Cheer enough, I might... I made the right decision by expelling your spirit. What's going on? You're consumed at the end of time. Oh. Okay. The glimpse... <laughs> the glimpse of the future. Sorry, flow is straight to the end. Time does not flow again. Yasala, who has replenished himself, awakened in all the raging power of all stars, raptures, and burn. The universe itself collapses. Oh. Yeah, at this point where the books are, I should save. Because I'm going to choose the right book. The language used in the book is not anything in human history that you ever seen. You slowly attempt to interpret these cryptic and ar arcane notes as your only choice. You are able to understand it as this. Nor is it to be thought that man is either the oldest or the last of this earth's masters, or that the common bulk of life and substance merely exist alone. And the old ones were the old ones are, and the old ones shall be. Not in the space we know, but between them, they walk serene and primal, undimensionized, dimen dimensionized, I don't think I said that right at all, to us unseen. Yoshala knows the gate. Yoshala is the gate. Yoshala is the key and guardian of the gate. The past, present, future, all are one in Yoshala. Some magical power still remains in the text. You can't get away in time. Hey, you what? Please. So, are you on time unknown? Vanished among the planets. Among the ancient tomes, activation of magical matrix created in inducing Cygnus activity and emanation of enchanted lumin luminosity from your physical form. Your ancestral home was transported to Planet Adidas, constellation where the planet Silencio resides. In the depths, your physical body experiences the absence of all pressure. This results in a suffocation. Oh my. Okay, I died. I died. You didn't. You didn't need to tell me I died. I, I died. I died in space. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Auto. What do you mean auto? I don't want to go to auto. I want to go there. And go to the past. Oh, how nice. It's so bright in the past. Who are you? You look like the As doll from frickin' the past, Bloodborne. The figure of a young woman appears in the fissure of history. She stares at you her back as you depart. And she then gently closes her eyes as her bodily gradually dissolves into the void as she watches her child for the last time. Damn. Okay. Did I really go back in time? Yes. Yes, you did. You open the door to the study and immediately realize you're not alone. You see your grandpa seated in his armchair. He smiles at you with an relieved expression with a lingering sense of proudness at who you become. His body begins to fade to light and you don't even have the time to mentally acknowledge sadness. Goodbye. Grandfather. He was waiting for you. You open the box. Why are they naked? In front of your eyes is a girl as delicate as a ceramic doll. Your heart is beating hard, but it's not all because of its attractive appearance. You feel an extraordinary sense of familiarity, of nostalgia, of intimacy, of longing for wholeness. Then the girl seems to be awakened by the noise and slowly sat up. You were about to ask some questions, but she cut you off first. You want to be vocal, but you can't control your body. 
She looked at you with a silver cross glow in her eye. You feel an invisible bond with her. Then you fur to her soft, eternal voice in your mind. I know how confused you must be. Come closer to me and I'll tell you the truth about this time. The stars are shining in her eyes. And you can't help but move closer to her. Before you know it, she puts her hand slowly on your forehead. You feel your brain flooded with information. Time. Ten years ago. When the disaster happened. The study. The infection with the strange is different from simple physical assimilation. I've already tested all of the available spells and medications. I can't even find a cure for Roland. If I were to compare this situation to another... It's like allowing an egg without a shell to maintain its integrity. All while surviving the rapids of a waterfall or allowing a person floating in the sea to rely on it himself to withstand heat waves and storms. Ancestor. You once left a prophecy to warn us of this day. The mission of watches and the price of truth are the same. Unparalleled sacrifice. I pray to her for your revelation. The Lord of Feet. The Guardian of the Abyss, Lord of Dimensions. Rilonor, Guardian of the Secrets. The oldest all in one, the one by long prolonged. Ur Atura. Yoshalatnafalakin. I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. Your servant calls upon you. Are you still unable to answer my prayers? We must go with the last resort. No matter what, we can't let the infection spread. The transport point to Celestial is ready. Now that the stars are in the right place, our success rate is up to 70%. I can't believe we looked up at the stars for decades, only to able to vanish among the stars at the last. What an ironic twist of fate. Oh, so that's what that circle was. Right as the array is about to be activated, the space changes. It's as if the magic has been drawn away. The dream twisted and turns in an, into an arch of rock dividing the two sides into two worlds that do not interfere with each other at all, virtual and real. From inside the door played a soft, eternal female voice. There is still a glimmer of hope. Are you willing to pay the price for it, though? As long as I can pay for it, please take what you must. A pure silver and white light covered George Howard, its energy sparkling like a multitude of stars. He felt like... He felt that he had never been so clear and insightful. As information continuously flows into his consciousness, George Howard's expression turns serious. So this is the history's truth. Now that I'm aware, I will do as you wish. Grandpa. Oh, it's me! A child pushes open the door to enter. And then as it is, body and actions are frozen. The static time begins to flow again. This is the separation being staged once again. You stubbornly refuse to leave. Until finally, under Grandpa's magic, you forget everything and leave like an empty container. Then I suppose, it's time to pay my price. Just as George Howard was preparing for the end, a voice came from the void. Do you have a last wish? If I may, I would like to see him when grown up. The voice hesitated for a moment, as if in thought or calculation. I can only give you one second. Is that enough? That's certainly enough. The time in the space freezes. 
Your mind is flooded with memories of the past. Maybe it's just a split second, or maybe it's years beyond thousands. A Fogamon's consciousness was forced into a deep sleep. In order not to be affected by what remains of Afrogomon's influence, Ghost will us bury the alienated parts under the ultimate gate. Calm has returned to the Sunless Sea, but the disoriented assimilation continues. Disordered. Chaos and empathy in the universe continues to grow slowly. I think that's what, not empathy, that's entropy. They're using a lot of words that I don't use commonly in my speech, so it's hurting me a lot. It's hurting me. You can tell this game was not made by Americans at all, bro. The glass stops the current moment of time from movement, preventing the black sand from spreading. Once you get rid of this black sand, the simulator should end. The hourglass is broken and the black sand in it is scattered. Jared emerges in response. Should I save? I should save. I should save. Who are you? Oh, so you chose to construct a puppet to preserve your power. How ridiculous. I didn't expect you to have grown so weak. Without any thought, a name forces itself to the forefront of your mind, a Forgomon. Could it be that after the rapture of the temporal loop, you were correctly perceived by them? As you're still considering your options, you heard her continue to speak. Oh, I'm very disappointed in you. You are the beginning and I am the end. Together we create time and space. Unfortunately, your authority over all knowledge has changed you. Your will has chosen to break away from us. So I had to clean up all of time and space for a quick reset. Now this is a surprise. I had planned to devour you to complete myself. Herself. But now I'm understanding that the human mind can be rather useful. As long as there are enough of them, then they could be an alternative. So, even without you, I'll be able to awaken our main body. You are no longer necessary. Wow, wow. Biggest mistake was making you into a mortal. Humans, what a fragile race. After destroying you, I'll have a good time romancing. Re remain remain saying with wow wow. Star key. As long as blah, your blah, blah. heart is not broken, time will restore your body. Every time you fall, you will accumulate the power to reshape space time. What you face now is only one of their billion of avatars. However, a Forgoman will never leave their true body, and their power cannot easily come here. 80 health. What is this? The potential enemies from the depths of the cosmos capable of even harming foes from other worlds. Sure. Do it. Damn. And then we'll do this one. Just in case we don't kill. What do you mean? Consider them defeated. Consider them dead. Your so is drowned and unable to continue with the combat. You are going to consider them defeated. You were defeated by a Forgo Moan, and the scorching lightning was about to engulf you. The silver key emitted a dazzling light, reshaping and restoring the surrounding space time. A Forgo Moan was expelled from this space by this force. As the avatar of a Forgomon was repelled, the whole space trembled violently in rage, and oppressive sounds rained down from all sides. You can hear the words being spoken, but you can feel the sheer anger can churn within each. A Forgoman cannot go back in time to this hundred years of history, and so they are preparing to return to the start of space-time. Darky, this is the most critical moment. Keep pushing. You see the water condensing from the earth back into the sky, the clouds dissipate, the sky is clear, the sun sets from the east, and the meteors flow back to the stars. Time is going backwards to the beginning. All of a sudden you feel like you're on the ocean, a great black fog rise over the darkness 
darkened sea, the black mist pulls you down into it. Being in the depths of the sea is like being among the stars. In the blink of an eye, you fall into the ocean, then fall into the galaxy. If the ship of Theseus Paradox is about whether you're still you after replacing all the materials, now it is about returning all the materials in your body in order to discover your origin. The material of your body, as small as cells, gradually dissipate into particles and return to its original state of being. After returning all the materials, a silver key gradually appears in the deep sea. This carries your spirit, your ego, and all the, your memories. The silver key flashes and sinks to the bottom of the deep sea, finally returning you to the place of strange familiarity. Familiarity. This is the dividing point between existence and non-existence. Black and white are independent of each other. Maintain this is how it's supposed to be. And now the nothingness has been nibbled away and it's all mixed up. You see the rap timeline moving away from its proper trajectory and towards nothingness. Which is splintered with each. Convergence. The debris clump together into a dim sphere. Ugh, you nice. feel a strong will locking you in. Darkness assimilating you. What do you mean that's a failure? I assume I'm supposed to fail either way. I can't win that. The assimilation devours you. You briefly lose the consciousness and hear Kova's voice. Star Key, don't be afraid of your. Don't be afraid of yourself. You feel a strong will locking you in. What? I'm so confused. I'm your so confused. Obsession, unwillingness, and your pain burst out in this moment. Like a sudden burst of lightning, your will lights up the night sky. Having pushed back the entity, your mental strength is at its limit. You lose traction, fall downwards, plummeting into the sea of no light. Your consciousness gradually becomes blurred as you are slowly sinking into the deepest part of your mind. Lightless abyss. As you sink, your consciousness becomes increasingly transparent. There's no end to the darkness ahead. Then you sense a familiar presence. It belongs to Tua. It's not exactly the same though. Like a door, like the end of everything. Your consciousness is becoming transparent. You finally saw them. They lift you up and make you whole once more. Their eyes are always on you and your you hear their voice words words starkey do you blame me for creating you no although coming into this world has made me feel all kinds of pain human beings are too fragile to be affected by all kinds of desires whether it's a family mission a duty of to others or a concern in your heart one forms a chain of invisible chains. However, sometimes the pain of these chains makes me feel warm and happy. It finally is drawn on me that this is something called desire. I obtained a lot of memories. These are precious memories that I should treasure. Do you like the world? No. 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 Can I save? Am I allowed to save? Is saving allowed? Can I say no? Can I say no? I, I can say no. I won't say no. I like the people of this world. They suffer together and share happiness. Even the smiles of a stranger can make me feel warm. Because these people make me feel connected to the world, it made me finally realize that I exist in the world. Do you have any regrets? Yes. In many ways I do. I certainly have many regrets. A lot of regrets, even something I realized only after it was too late. I regret not being honest with those I cared about in the end. The fact that it's no use saying it to them now. I suppose I feel guilty. I didn't realize what I had until I lost it. Do you want to change the world even if that sacrifice makes you cease to exist? It's not that I want to change the world, it's some grand fairy tale. I can't read that. What, what are you trying to make me- I can't read that. 
What? 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 I can't read that. Oh, there we go. Wait. Rather that I want to separate the Swiss of time and prevent further tragedies, both to ye those I shared a bond with, to thank my family for putting the everything they had to seek happiness for me, for myself who has grown specially over these past 10 years and finally has found a purpose that I truly believe in, lastly for you who has given me this chance. For this I am willing to bear the heaviest fate. I see. Stocky, my awakening requires the great sacrifice. But I, who has infinite and omnipotent powers, I'm unable to sacrifice myself, so I must ask that you face this death instead of me. This death means separate from the self. All your past will be cut away and dismantled, and the timeline you once lived will be purged of any choice you once had. I will reboot the original timeline, effectively restoring the distorted one. Speak my name, Starkey. I will awaken and prevent the world's downfall. The most ancient prolonged of life. Both are Tawal. You managed to awake Tawal. As the first consciousness to awaken in Yosaloth, they succeed in taking control of the body. Yosaloth is awakening. Agurmaran, consciousness was forced into a deep sleep in order not to be affected by the remains of Arformad's influence. Yosaloth buried the alien apart after under the ultimate gate. Calmed has returned to the sunless sea, but distorted assimilation continues. Chaos and entropy in the universe continue to grow slowly. At the beginning of time, white mist wrapped itself over the sunless sea beneath. As it begins to part, you see the black twisted timeline slowly unravel it into the correct flow of history. Jerry 15, 1910. Arkham, an old castle clinging to the hills. In the castle, a group of people are holding a birthday dinner to celebrate a family member who just turned eight. The crowd stood together, ready for the family photo shoot. A grown man smiled brightly while a beautiful and elegant woman held his arm. Sitting in the middle was the dignified old man who looks to have gone against the soul man. So, so, this word, hate it. Nature today, because it is holding the heroes of today party, a smiling little girl with little light blue hair. Why is no, no AI reading this? The man's white beard was pulled by the little girl in his arms. The woman scrambled to put an end to the girl's mischief. The little girl looked at the previously smiling man with an innocent expression, and the man made an exaggerated face at the girl. It is just so happened to be caught on camera. Amy was busy sorting books in the library as usual. Finally, a break, but I'm gonna have to read the next line. She was so timid and shy. While well, sorting those, uh, though, sorting through the books, a poster slipped off the table. She picked it up, and it was the Toshka poster from the Opera Society today for art for love. The stars are resplendent, resplendent today. Amy looked up at the poster, and she seemed to momentarily gasp, looking confused yet pained. I wanted to say something, but in the end, my voice was no more able to speak than the air itself. She crumpled to her knees as she experienced a sense of loss that she didn't fully understand. Why am I crying? Oh no. Oh no. In the evening, first Carl and Professor Julie were working at their desk in the school office. Miss Julie sighed deeply after sorting through a pile of papers and complained to Carl? Students are getting worse these days. They can't bear any hardship that come their way. If young people continue to only seek enjoyment, human- Okay, cool. Carl did not respond to Julie's complaints, instead saying optimistically. This generation of young people is better than us, as they can at least pursue their own ideals. People who can't listen to the sounds are simply living in a dream. Being aware of one's self-consciousness and developing their own unique personality is a rather in viable prospect. Your nagging hasn't changed at all, old man. Aren't you eager to find students who can continue your studies? Do you want to end up irresponsible and irrelevant? 
Or do you already find that what you were looking for? Carl pulled out a bottle of whiskey, took a sip, and a bitter expression slowly formed on his face. Painful things cannot be avoided in life, only endured. <laughs>